everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm making Moo Shu Chicken. I know it's usually made with pork, but you can use chicken, pork, or extra firm tofu. If you guys want to know how to make this, please hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. Alright, these are the ingredients we're going to be using. This right here is for the marinade itself. And then a second showing here of the other ingredients that you will be needing for this recipe. I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible but really it's just ingredients going right into a bowl and we're just going to mix it all up. First we've got the hoisin sauce and then our rice wine vinegar and I'm using two tablespoons of oyster sauce. Yes I am eyeballing all of this and I've been doing this for a while so I kind of get the idea of it. Then we added our sesame oil and then our garlic. Again mine is already minced up but use minced crushed garlic whatever works for you. Use about what was it about four to five garlics and then some pepper to taste and mix this all up. At this point you can also add two tablespoons of soy sauce or your tamari whatever substitute it is that you like and mix it right into all of the marinade ingredients here. I chose not to use it because I find it to be a little bit more on the salty side so maybe if you want to cut back to a tablespoon if you'd like but I don't find that it's necessary to add in there but if you want to add it go ahead and do so. Moving right along, we're just again mixing everything to make sure everything is nicely combined and we are going to go ahead and get a smaller bowl and we're going to add about half of that marinade right into the bowl and set this aside because we're going to use it later in our frying pan with our coleslaw bags. Now choose your meat of choice, your pork or your chicken would work fine. Um, if you want to make this vegetarian, again use the extra firm tofu. And you're just going to cut the tofu up into like smaller, thinner slices. Basically the same way like this, but you're going to be careful with the tofu because obviously it's going to break. It would break more easily, so we'll get to that in a second. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and chop off whatever fat pieces that we don't want. And we're going to cut these up into thin slices. You notice like when you start in the beginning where it's a little bit thinner, obviously we don't have to keep slicing that up you guys will see. I'm going to go ahead and slice this up and you guys will see how I am going to grab the thicker pieces like so here and then we're just going to cut this right in half and we'll do the same for all the larger pieces that we have and you're going to see my chicken right there in the background. That'll be something that I'm going to be, I'm going to be using about half of or a third of because when I measured it out it's going to be about a pound. You guys will see. So again, I've already used about a third of my chicken in the background. I'm not going to use the rest of that. I will go ahead and set that aside later because I don't need that anymore. But we're going to go through our pieces and if you find any thicker pieces that you might have missed, go ahead and do that. Grab those pieces now and cut those into thinner slices. And then this will cook a lot faster in your frying pan. It's going to be worth it for you in the long run because you want to save as much time as you can when you're cooking anything. So grab that large bowl of marinade that we had earlier and then throw your chicken right in it. And we're going to let this sit in our bowl for about five minutes and let it sit there marinate once we've mixed everything up. And then we're going to move on to the rest of our stuff. Pretty easy, pretty basic so far. You're going to love this. It's going to be a good, quick thing to do. You can have your kids help out if you want to because it's really, really simple once you've done all the chopping part of it. All right, so that's it for that part and let's go ahead and get to our frying pan. Go ahead and heat this up on a high heat setting and then we're going to add about a tablespoon of vegetable oil right into it. We're going to let this heat into the pan and you know your pan's all nice and hot once you've got your oil in there and it'll slide around easily inside of your pan. Once you've gotten to that point, you're able to go ahead and just move everything around nicely. Grab your chicken that we had marinated. It's been about five minutes, by the way, and so we're going to go ahead and throw all of that right in there. And you will be cooking your chicken for about five to seven minutes. That's about how long it'll take you. Let's just say six minutes of cooking time right here. We're going to cook this for about six minutes, let it continue to cook, and break up any pieces that might be stuck together, and just leave it alone, basically. That's how easy this is. At this point, if you wanted to make pork, you would do the exact same thing. If you wanted to do the tofu, again, thinly sliced, be very gentle, use a spatula, not tongs, to go ahead and move those around easily or just more carefully so you don't break any pieces apart, or at least not too many pieces. 
So once this has been cooking for about five to seven minutes, you're gonna wanna go ahead and grab a clean plate and go ahead and put all of your chicken or your tofu or your pork, whatever, and set that aside. Again, if you're using tofu, please make sure you're very careful with it. The oil with the tofu. Actually, you know what? The one thing you should do with the tofu is before you go ahead and even fry it, get a couple of paper towels and press down on it to make sure you can squeeze out as much liquid as possible because otherwise you're gonna have the water and the oil and it's gonna be a bad combination. So again, grab your tofu. Once you've sliced it, go ahead and press down on it gently to dry out as much of it as possible. Okay, now that we have everything put aside, I went ahead and drained out the rest of it and kind of wiped it down a little bit. Added another tablespoon of vegetable oil right in there. And again, once that's hot and moving around inside of your pan, this is where you're gonna grab your coleslaw. I chose to get the ones with the purple cabbage because I mean, it's the colorful, it's prettier, why not? Usually you can find one large 14 ounce bag, but I couldn't find that, so I ended up getting two smaller eight ounce bags, and so I used 16 ounces. That's why I said 14 to 16 ounces of coleslaw is fine. And just so you guys are very aware, use a deep pan or a large pot or a wok because, I mean, everything will get smaller, but in the beginning with the cabbage, because, you know, when it's not cooked, it's just gonna be large on top right there. So we wanna flatten that out and cook it as much as possible. I am using a large pan. Now, while I was chatting away, you guys missed the part where I just started chopping away or cutting up green onions right into my pan because I didn't want to use another cutting board or wash the one that I had or get another knife. <laughs> Basically, I was being lazy, so <laughs> this is what I'm doing. So the first green onion, I am cutting right into the pan, and then what I'm gonna do is mix all of this up, as you see, with some tongs just to make it easier because that's what I use to pull out the cooked chicken. And then, once this is mixed up, I will grab the other green onion and I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting that right into the pan as well to make sure I have everything just combine nicely. You don't have like a chunk of green onions in one section. You just want to be able to make sure it gets mixed up all within your ingredients. So my optional things that I mentioned, well actually I wrote inside the ingredients part of the very beginning of the video. This is where you would add your mushrooms. I've tried it with mushrooms. I prefer it without mushrooms, but if you want to use mushrooms, I would suggest white mushrooms because otherwise the shiitake mushrooms or what other, whatever other flavors, they, they could be too strong and I think it overpowers the flavor of this dish. So I choose not to use mushrooms at all. Also the egg part. If you want to use eggs, you're gonna have to do a two part process here. You're just gonna grab some two, grab a couple of eggs, whisk it, and then fry it in your frying pan and cook it like you would an omelet, just one big omelet. And once that is cooked, you're gonna go ahead and take that out, cut that up on your, uh, on your cutting board into nice thin strips. And then you will add that once you put your chicken back in and everything else. But you just missed this part. Remember that smaller bowl of uh, this marinade we made? We're gonna throw that right into the pan and we're gonna combine it with our slaw to make sure that the slaw gets a lot of flavor in it too and just not the chicken. And you'll see with our slaw, it had to be wilted and it has to be translucent. You wanna make sure it's soft and then we're gonna go ahead and add that cooked chicken that we already set aside right on top and then we're gonna mix all of our ingredients together and cook this for about another two minutes or so to make sure everything's cooked through, your chicken is hot, your chicken is cooked through, the wilted coleslaw is all there, there, nothing's like hard and firm and crunchy. You can have a little bit of it, but you don't want too much of it. And that is it for our one pan dish here, I guess. Now to serve this, go ahead and serve it over rice, serve it with some flour tortillas, or if you wanna make Chinese pancakes, which I didn't wanna do any of that, or even lettuce cups, and just serve it right into that. Add some crushed peanuts, your green onions, some more hoisin sauce, some sesame seeds, and you're done. Now if you guys like this recipe, please hit that subscribe button, like it and share it, and until the next meal, thank you for watching Watch Me Cook.